malaria is caused by one or more of four species of the protozoan parasite, Plasmodium. Plasmodium vivax, causing vivax or tertian malaria, with chills every other day. Plasmodium malariae, causing quartan malaria, with chills every third day. Plasmodium falciparum, causing falciparum malaria, called estivo autumnal malaria, sometimes called malignant tertian because of its severity and high mortality. And Plasmodium ovale, generally found only in certain parts of Africa. These malaria parasites have a complicated life cycle which requires two hosts for completion. The Anopheles mosquito, and man. In man, symptoms of the disease are associated with the development of the asexual cycle. The chills and fever correspond to the periodic multiplication of the parasite in the circulating blood. The presence of these parasites in the bloodstream may be demonstrated by the microscopic examination of a properly stained blood smear. They are found inside the red blood cells. A prolonged search is often required to find them. The asexual form of the parasite develops within the red blood cells. These illustrations of the developmental stages of Plasmodium vivex begin with a young ring form, which rapidly enlarges. As this trophozoite develops, it assumes an amoeboid form and almost fills the enlarged cell. This mature trophozoite still contains a single chromatin mass. As the chromatin mass divides, the parasite is called a schizon, meaning divider. The early form of the schizont is called a pre-segmenter, since no division of the cytoplasm is yet observed. When the cytoplasm begins to divide, it is called a segmenter and contains 12 to 24 new parasites. Such a reproduction occurs every 42 to 48 hours. These new parasites are called merozoites and are dispersed in the blood as the cell ruptures. Many of them infect new red cells forming young rings and the process is repeated. Some of these merozoites develop differently, growing into sexual forms, male and female gametocytes, which are incapable of further development in the human host. To demonstrate these parasites in man, a drop of blood is smeared on a clean glass slide, stained and examined microscopically. This procedure for the microscopical diagnosis of malaria actually begins with the selection and cleaning of the slide on which the blood smear is to be made. Slides must be clear and free from scratches, dirt, grease or chemicals. Even new slides must be cleaned. These may be washed and soaked in warm soapy water and then rinsed thoroughly. After rinsing, the slides are soaked in 95% alcohol. They are then wiped dry and polished with a lint-free cloth and stored in dustproof containers. The face of the clean slide should not be touched with the fingers. Blood for making the smear is obtained by pricking the finger or the lobe of the ear after cleaning with an alcohol sponge. The prick is deep enough for the blood to well up under gentle pressure. Thick and thin smears may be made on the same slide. The smear is allowed to dry and is then properly identified with the date and the patient's name.
The malaria parasites are best stained with a Ginza stain, which is certified by the manufacturer. Careful technique assures properly stained parasites, providing clear differentiation of cytoplasm and nuclear elements. If the staining solution is not properly buffered, the color of the smear will be unsatisfactory. When the slides are dry, they are ready to be examined. A good microscope is essential and a microscope lamp giving a blue-white light is desirable for proper examination. The 1.8 or 2 millimeter oil immersion objective is used with 5X or 6X oculars. This slide is from a case of Vivax malaria and the parasite is a young ring form. It could not be distinguished from an older falciparum ring. The early stages of Vivax parasites, more active than other species, usually present amoeboid forms, often very tenuous. The Vivax rings are seldom smaller than one-third the diameter of the enlarged red cell. Learning to distinguish the different stages and species of the parasite requires many hours of careful study. In some cases, the experts may be in doubt. In the cell containing a Vivax parasite, numbers of small red dots are frequently observed, referred to as Schuffner's stippling or Schuffner's dot. As the trophozoite develops, the red cell usually enlarges. This is characteristic of Plasmodium vivax. Note the amoeboid form of this maturing trophozoite and the enlarged red cell. In Vivax or tertian malaria, the asexual cycle requires about 48 hours for completion. In this mature segmenter, there are about 18 or 20 merozoites. Vivax usually has from 12 to 24. This is an unusual view of the merozoites just as the infected cell ruptured. Many of them are destroyed. Some infect new cells. The male, or microgametocyte, has pale cytoplasm and large, light, diffuse chromatin usually centrally placed. The female, or macrogametocyte, takes a darker stain than the male, and the chromatin is dark red, compact, and usually eccentric. So much for Plasmodium vivax. A slide from a patient with quartan malaria is now examined to demonstrate the various stages of Plasmodium malariae. The young ring forms of malariae closely resemble those of other species. The young trophozoite of malaria 
usually lacks the marked irregularity of Vivax and is more compact. In malaria, the red cell is not enlarged and Schuchner's dots are not seen. The trophozoites of malaria are often found as band forms, stretched across the cell with fairly straight parallel edges. Such a band shape may be assumed by the parasite at any stage in its development. Note here the normal size of the red cells and the compactness of the parasite in the older form. Plasmodium malariae, which causes quartan malaria, requires three days for its asexual cycle, as compared with two days in Vivax and Falciparum. The pre-segmenter shown here practically fills the normal-sized red cell. This mature segmenter was producing 8 to 10 merozoites. 6 to 12 with an average of 8 is typical of malaria. Can you identify these parasites? Reference to pictures and written descriptions in an authoritative manual will increase the effectiveness of individual observation and study but will never replace actual experience. Three things must be determined. Are they parasites? If so, what species? What developmental state? Gametocytes are not found so frequently in malaria as in vivax. The distinction between male and female is generally the same. This next slide is from a case of falciparum malaria. Falciparum ring forms are generally more numerous and more prone to multiple infections and marginal forms than other species. Small rings may be only one-sixth the diameter of the red cell but larger ones are the same size as Vivax or malaria rings. Falciparum varies from the other species in that normally only ring forms and gametocytes, not the developing stages, are seen in peripheral blood. This slide was especially selected in order to show other forms such as these developing trophozoa. Contrast the normal size of these red blood cells with the enlarged cells of the corresponding vivax form. The segmenters in falciparum are small, although not always this small, and produce from 8 to 24 merozoi.
You can't miss falciparum if you see a typical crescent-shaped gametocyte. But don't forget that a patient might have two or three species at the same time. The younger gametocytes aren't always easily recognized since they may resemble other forms. In falciparum malaria, the symptoms may be severe and the results fatal, even when parasites are too rare to be found on routine examination. Suppose we review, by means of these comparative diagrams, the principal diagnostic characteristics that you have just seen in these photomicrographs. Although the ring forms of the three species are different, it may be impossible to distinguish them in any one microscopic field. The vivax and malariae rings are about the same size, with malariae rings tending to be more compact. The youngest falciparum rings are smaller and usually more numerous than in the two other species. They are more likely to have double chromatin dots and present marginal forms. Compare the developing trophozoites of the three species. The developing trophozoites of vivax are usually amoeboid until mature, presenting irregular edges and vacuolated cytoplasm. The red cells are usually enlarged and may or may not show Schuchner's dot. In malaria, the infected cell is of normal size. This is also true of falciparum. The malariae trophozoites are more compact, with less amoeboid movement and more regular edges. The older forms of falciparum often assume bizarre shapes, but the older falciparum rings frequently look exactly like the younger rings of other species. As the parasites of the three species develop, additional differentiation points may be observed. Remember the amoeboid form of vivax with the enlarged red cell, frequently containing Schuffner stippling. The parasite does not usually fill the cell. Remember the BAM form, typical of quartan malaria. The malariae parasites are more compact and when fully grown are more likely to fill the normal sized red cell. The corresponding forms of falciparum are seen in the peripheral blood only in very severe cases. Even when fully matured, these parasites seldom fill more than half the cell. When the trophozoite reaches maturity and the chromatin divides, it becomes a schizont. As the merozoites develop, the schizont is called a segmenter. The segmenters of vivax usually contain about 16 merozoids, but often range from 12 to 24 in number, while in malaria they may number from 6 to 12, usually about 8. In falciparum, the segmenter may contain from 8 to 24 merozoids. The average is about 20. The merozoids in falciparum are smaller than in the other species. Notice again the normal size of the infected cell in malaria. And in falciparum. 
as compared with the enlarged cell in Vivac. Some of the parasites do not develop into segmenters, but become the sexual forms known as gametocytes. Unless these are picked up by the mosquito, their development ceases and they are destroyed. The gametocytes of falciparum, called crescents because of their shape, are the more easily recognized of all the forms, and when present, simplify the identification of this species. The gametocytes of the two other species are readily distinguished from falciparum, but not so easily from one another. Both the parasites and the cells tend to be larger in vivac. The male gametocyte of all three species stains more faintly. The cytoplasm may be pale blue-gray or almost colorless. The chromatin is usually diffuse, pale, and centrally located. The female gametocyte stains a darker blue, and the chromatin is more condensed. It is darker red in color, and more likely to be located near the margin of the parasite. It is often difficult or impossible to distinguish a young female gametocyte from a mature trophozoite. Adequate diagnosis of human malaria requires a knowledge of all stages, ring forms, the developing asexual forms, both as trophozoites and segmenters, and the sexual forms. Now, do you know a parasite when you see one? What's this? Normal blood with a blood platelet superimposed on a red cell. Don't let it fool you. What species is this? We wouldn't know it was Vivax if we hadn't seen other forms on the same slide. Notice how much it resembles this falciparum ring. Both are marginal forms, more typical of falciparum. What about this? This is a ring form of one species, and this another. And this one. Yes, vivac. The enlarged red cell and Schuffner stippling are typical. But what stage? Trophozoite? Gametocyte? What do you think? These pictures should help you learn to discover and identify malaria parasites. But they cannot replace experience at the microscope. If you really want to learn to diagnose malaria microscopically, it's you and the microscope. Slide after slide, case after case, day after day.